Hi, everybody. Welcome to tonight's junior parent meeting. My name is Rebecca Mullen, and I'm the counseling department chairperson at Greeley. We are very fortunate tonight to have with us a special guest speaker, Mr. Chandler Holden, assistant director of admissions at Yale University. We look forward to hearing from Mr. Holden in a few minutes, but first tonight, we're going to hear a message from Peggy Machetto, president of the Horace Greeley Scholarship Fund. I will then return for some brief remarks before handing things off to assistant director Holden. Please know that we will leave plenty of times for questions and answers at the end. Uh, Peggy? Thanks so much, Rebecca. Um, I'm Peggy Machetto, and I'm the president of the Horace Greeley Scholarship Fund. For over 70 years, the Horace Greeley Scholarship Fund has provided financial awards to Greeley graduates to help them pay for college. Um, Greeley grads and their families turn to the fund when all other financial resources have been exhausted. And with our community's help, we're able to fill this gap for students in need. The only prerequisite to apply for a grant from the fund is that the student be a current Greeley senior or a current college student. Um, the awards are made strictly on the basis of need, and all applications are completely confidential. Um, no one from our board sees it. It's all done by outside consultants. They review um, all the applications. Last year, we were able to award uh, just over $400,000 in grants to over 40 students. Um, and you can find more information about scholarships and applications, as well as our mission and our amazing fundraising events um, on our website, uh, hgsf.org. And the spelling bee is on Monday. So I know everyone has cleared their calendar for that event on Monday evening. Um, thank you so much. And as always, uh, to our wonderful community and to all the students who continue to support each other and the Scholarship Fund's mission to ensure that every Greeley graduate has the opportunity to attend college. And um, keep us in mind as you make it through the college application process. And thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you, Peggy. In counseling, we've had a busy fall. As of this morning, about 89% of the senior class has applied to college, and we expect that number to grow to 95% before the next early deadline of 1115. As of today, Mrs. Campana and Ms. Mealy submitted transcripts 1,624 times via SCORE, in addition to thousands of other documents, including counselor letters, the school profile, et cetera, to 221 colleges. They do all of this in one month's time. In about six weeks, the majority of the senior class will have heard back from the early colleges they applied to. That's right, by this time next year, over 90% of your children will have ap applied to college. The most important message we want you to hear tonight is that Greeley's success in this process is due in large part to our department's teamwork approach with each other, with our families, and with our students. We also just spent time this fall, as we always do, working with our college counseling colleagues on our professional development to help our students be successful. This included reviewing applications and case studies at various institutions with the college admissions counselors. I really want you to know that all eight of us counselors love what we do, and having nearly finished our work with the seniors, we are ready and excited to begin working with you on the college process. So our work with juniors begins tonight as we outline for you some of the ways to approach this process. On November 21st, we will begin meeting with your children in small junior groups. The times and locations for these groups will be sent to them via Canvas. Some of the topics that we will talk about in these groups include teaching your children how to use SCORE, how to make a college list, we discuss the most important factors in college admissions, and we talk to them about applications. These groups are really important because they give our students the tools needed to take charge of this process. At the end of these groups, we're going to ask our juniors to complete the junior questionnaire form. This form is an opportunity for students to indicate for us whether or not they have a major in mind, Maybe there's a spot in the country they want to go to, a geographical location. Um, maybe they want to go to a school half the size of Greeley or 50 times the size. This information is vital for us to have a well-informed college meeting. 
with our students and families. So it needs to be submitted to the counselor prior to the scheduling of your college meeting. So those meetings can happen once, once our junior groups are completed at the end of January. Some families like to come in right away and others would rather wait for first semester grades and or ACT or SAT scores, um, which may come later in the spring. After our family meeting, you will then spend the rest of the spring researching and visiting colleges so that by the first few weeks in September, your child has a list that is ready to go and that we all feel comfortable with. In August, I will send you an email with all of the step-by-step -step instructions for how to handle the college process at Greeley. Please know that we are here to support your children every step of the way. And now I am so honored to share a little bit about Assistant Director Holden with you before turning things over to him. Chandler Holden is an Assistant Director of Admission at Yale University, where he oversees applications from Westchester County, Northern California, and Santa Barbara, and is responsible for admitted student programming. Prior to beginning at Yale, Chandler grew up in the small town of Roxbury, Connecticut, and later attended Bucknell University, where he double majored in education and women's and gender studies. He studied abroad in Sweden, served as student body president, an admissions ambassador, and an executive intern in the office of the president. After Bucknell, Chandler attended Harvard University's Graduate School of Education and earned his master's in higher education with a focus on college student development. While at Harvard, Chandler was a graduate application reader for the Kennedy School and the graduate assistant in the office of BGLTQ Student Life. Chandler began working at Yale's Office of Undergraduate Admissions in 2021 and is very excited to jump into his second admission cycle this far. We have had a wonderful time working with Chandler in the past, and we are so excited um, to hear from Assistant Director Holden now. So with no further ado, I turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh, and hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It was fun seeing the number continue uh, to grow uh, in terms of looking at the attendees list. I know I can't see all of you, but I know you're out there. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in tonight and Rebecca for having me to this program. Um, I'm excited to jump in. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, um, perfect. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the college admissions process. I promise not to take too, too long, but I wanna make sure um, that I get my points across and that you kind of understand a little bit more about the process, at least in terms of the perspective of a current admissions officer. Um, so I know Rebecca read a little bit of a bio, but a little, bo a little more about me. Uh, similar to my colleagues, I oversee a certain territory in our country. Uh, my territory includes Westchester County as well as um, parts of California. So that what that means is that I am um, in charge of reading applications and helping the committee make decisions about applicants from these areas. Uh, it also means that I get to work with the high schools uh, and counselors from these territories as well. Uh, so I've had Horace Greeley now um, heading into my second cycle and I'm able to continue to develop a relationship with the schools in these territories. I'm originally from Connecticut, so I'm familiar with Westchester County, uh, not too far from the Northwest corner of Connecticut where I grew up. Um, and I had to throw in, especially with the uh, Midnight's release last week that I am a big uh, Taylor Swift fan, and I know some of you out there are as well, so I thought I'd give a little shout out to Taylor. Uh, jumping in now to the actually important things, um, the agenda uh, for tonight. From me, I am going to talk a little bit about undergraduate admissions at Yale. Um, and then, because I know that not all students are going to be interested in Yale, we're going to talk about your context at Horace Greeley. I uh, talked about exploration and finding a good fit for a college. And then I want to bust some myths for all of you. Uh, these are going to be based on things that I hear when I'm traveling on the road from um, students, from counselors, um, also from parents if they're visiting campus. And then we're going to turn to any questions that you all have. And um, I, along with your counselors, will, will try to answer as many of your questions as we can. So um, 
definitely think about your questions. If you want to put them in the chat, that's fine, or in the question and answer feature, but we'll get to that at the end of the session. But I'm going to go ahead um, and jump in to talking a little bit about Yale briefly. Yale is located in New Haven, Connecticut, so not too, too far from all of you in Westchester. Um, central to the university is uh, Yale College. So we do have 14 graduate and professional schools. We are a research university, but what's most central to Yale is the college, which is our liberal arts college that all undergraduates apply to and enroll in. The undergraduate population is around 6,500 students. So not a huge school, but also not a teeny tiny uh, liberal arts. We have 80 different majors. Many students will double major. Uh, and what I like to point out is that students do not have to declare a major until the second semester of their sophomore year. So there's a lot of time to explore exactly what you want to study. We are looking for students who want to explore both the arts and the sciences and everything in between. And we offer more than 2,000 different courses each academic year just to undergraduate students alone. We have a six to one student faculty ratio. Uh, so if uh, you as a student or your student parents uh, is looking for a tight knit community where relationships with faculty members is encouraged, um, Yale is a place where those interactions occur on a regular basis. Uh, particularly within our 14 residential colleges where several faculty members uh, live in each of the 14. You can think about Harry Potter and the four houses, uh, but instead of houses and only four, we have residential colleges where all students live for at least their first two years. Um, and then uh, a lot will actually stay for all four years. And the residential colleges are central to life on Yale's campus. Moving in now a little bit about admissions and financial aid. I know you're all juniors and these deadlines uh, are not something that you want to be or should be stressing over in this moment. But just to give you a little preview about what, what next fall might look like for you um, and what the current seniors are going through, we have two admissions rounds at Yale. The first is single choice early action, which is not binding. Those applications are due November 1st, so just two days ago. Uh, we received a bunch of applications from folks in Westchester and all across the country and world, but most students apply in regular decision and that's due uh, January 2nd. We get back to students at the end of March or early April. So that's a little bit about our timeline uh, and a little bit about financial aid, which is a separate office from admissions, but it's important for me to mention is that at Yale, we meet 100% of a family's demonstrated need and we have a need blind admissions policy. So I, as an admissions officer, I'm actually not looking at any financial aid information throughout the admissions process. And we're not using that information to make decisions. We also have a $0 parent share for families that make less than $75,000 a year. If you or your student want to get an idea of how much it might cost to attend Yale, definitely check out our quick cost calculator, which is available uh, via this QR code on our link tree. Um, so I'll just kind of pause here for a moment. Um, and as you are scanning that QR code, if you're interested, um, I will mention our podcast inside the Yale admissions office, not just relevant to students applying to Yale, but students applying to college, specifically selective um, colleges and universities. This podcast uh, features episodes talking about things like our committee process, the do's and don'ts of the college essay, how to choose what teachers will write your recommendations, a lot of great advice that I know you are getting from your counselors at school. But again, um, the podcast comes from the perspective of actually two of our most senior admissions officers, Mark and Hannah. Um, so definitely check that out. They're 20 to 30 minutes each episode, 27 episodes. Um, so that might be a good thing just to start thinking about the college process, um, regardless of your interest in Yale. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to um, all of you talking about Horace Greeley and your context there. What you see on the screen here is um, what we know as a school profile. So as we're reading applications, as I'm reading applications from both New York and California, um, sometimes I get the question, well, how do you understand what that community is like, what that culture is like, what that school offers? 
Uh, and so I thought it was important to answer this kind of with this image, which is a screenshot of the first page of the school profile that your counselors provide to admissions officers for each student that's applying. It's not personalized for each student. It's a general couple pages of what your school is about, the courses that you offer um, or that students are offered um, at your school and some general statements about the school gear, maybe about how COVID has impacted the school community and different contact information as well as, as well as some different averages in terms of testing and grade point averages. So when I was looking at this profile, as I was putting together this presentation, there are a couple of things that I was looking at to help me get an understanding of Horace Greeley. Um, and I should say, I'm not a huge stranger to Horace Greeley. As I mentioned, I, I grew up close to um, Westchester and I worked with your school and counselors last year in the cycle. Um, but my grandmother actually attended Horace Greeley. So that's my little fun fact. She actually has a sticker on the back of her car still. Um, but as I was looking at this context, uh, contextual information, trying to learn more about Horace Greeley, this is kind of the information uh, that I understood. It's a community of 1,200 students with 150 faculty and staff members. There are extensive AP course offerings at Horace Greeley, um, above average, certainly, um, as well as uh, SAT and ACT scores above average. Four different languages are offered. Five AP courses are in the arts alone. 98% of students are matriculating to institutions of higher education. Uh, and incredible to hear that, um, I think Rebecca said 98 per, or 89% of students have applied already to um, institutions already just in the early round. That is impressive. Um, there are sports, 88 clubs, three newspapers. So what I see here is that students at Greeley are doing a lot. Um, they have opportunities to challenge themselves inside and outside the classroom. And also, just by looking at some of the information and even hearing your counselors tonight, um, it sounds like you all have the support uh, that will allow you to have a successful application process to college. The fact that you're starting right now, uh, junior fall, is impressive alone. And so by showing you what I see, and by describing it to you, I want you to know, uh, parents and students, that you all are in a really good place, especially right now as juniors. Um, something that I appreciate being an area officer and getting to work with Westchester and California is that I get to know the counselors in schools as I develop in this role. So while yeah, last year was my first year, this year's my second year, I'm kind of uh, getting an understanding of each of the schools that I am reading about and I'm getting to know your counselors as well. So I will continue to do so for as long as I'm in this role and keep Westchester. But the reason we have uh, areas is to give us the context and allow us to really get to know the people and the place um, of high schools. Moving into exploration, finding a great fit. Not all students, myself included when I was in your shoes, uh, not all student, uh, not all students are going to be applying to Yale, and that is okay. Um, I am aiming here to give you an idea of how to find the fit for you. There are many different institutions of higher education, colleges, universities that you can be exploring, applying to, and attending. They do not all have to be those that your peers are attending the schools that maybe your teachers or parents have attended. Um, there are many institutions just waiting to have you explore. But my first piece of advice in this process, as you're thinking about what you want in a college, what you're going to put on that list for your counselors, um, is to reflect on your current context. You go to a school where you have around 300 students per class, um, where this total student body is 1,200 students, how do you feel about that size? There are colleges that have the same student body size as your high school. Does it feel too small? Does it feel comfortable? Um, that's one way that you can think about size. Think about what you have explored in high school, the academic disciplines you've enjoyed. Have you engaged in, engaged in scientific research? Is that something you want to continue in college? Maybe you want to look for a research university. 
Maybe you have formed really close relationships with your faculty members and want to go to a school with a small student faculty ratio where there are tight knit, tight knit uh, living and learning communities. Think about what you're enjoying about high school right now and what you maybe don't enjoy and are hoping for. Are you hoping to go to school in a city, in a small town, in a suburb? Think about your experiences so far in life so as to help you form uh, what your future may be. So think about the now is kind of my first uh, piece of advice. Um, and then as you're beginning to explore and think about what you're looking for, I recommend you use the tools that are easily accessible to you. I know that Ms. Mullen talked about going out on college tours um, and seeing campuses, and that's great. Uh, but uh, there are many schools that have things such as virtual campus tours these days. You really don't have to leave your house to get a sense of institutions. You can visit websites. Uh, listen to podcasts. We are not the only college or university with an admissions podcast. One uh, piece of advice that I like to give current students, um, or sorry, prospective students and families when they visit campus and ask, you know, how can I get a sense of life on campus? And what I told them was to go to YouTube and Google Yale or whatever institution you're interested in and search day in the life. There are students uh, across the country that make videos about their college experience. So that's one way to use the resources at your disposal online to get to know a campus culture. Of course, um, you're going to be inclined to visit a campus to see what the students are like, what they're doing, how they're interacting with each other on their campus, what the town is like. That's important because you're going to want to like the place where you are going to school for presumably four years. So that's important. Uh, but don't forget that there are tools to help you explore colleges in California, for example, uh, without you ever having to leave the state of New York. Uh, so keep that in mind. Get organized, uh, make spreadsheets, post sticky notes, whatever is helpful to you. Organization is going to be key. There are many different schools with many different statistics and profiles, things you like, things you don't like. So start to keep track of that. And the easiest way to do so and to remember is gonna be by writing it down and getting yourself organized. Your counseling team has a really robust timeline for your search, and that's fantastic. Uh, but what deadlines do you want to set for yourself within uh, those broader uh, goals and deadlines set for you. Um, that's important to think about as well. Place value on and practice independence. Parents, I know it's hard um, letting go. I'm not a parent and I should not be giving parenting advice, but this is a really good process for students to learn independence. Um, sometimes uh, we have um, students whose parents are calling and emailing, and that's okay. We understand you're part of the educational mission for your students, but at the same time, this is a great way for students to get prepared for college uh, by learning self-advocacy skills, for example. So while you may be working with your student and student with parent uh, and counselors throughout this process, work together as a team and allow the student to lead the search as much um, as they can and as much as they're interested in doing. And finally, I said I shouldn't be giving parent advice. I should not be giving love advice either, but I will tell you to not fall in love with a school. Um, you may have a dream school already. You might be influenced by a parent, a family member, someone who's currently a senior applying early to an institution of their dreams, and you may believe that it's the right school for you. And that's great that you do feel that you have a connection and a fit with a school. But keep looking because there is definitely another school with a similar profile that you would love just as much. The college admissions process is wonky. Um, you cannot control the outcome, um, at least from the beginning of your process. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, so protect yourself and allow yourself to explore and be open to several different perfect schools or dream schools. What is the overall character of a school that you are looking for? It's okay to have a favorite. If you're going to apply early somewhere, that's going to be one school, um, typically not several. 
Um, so it's okay to have favorites, but definitely don't fall in love and think that that's the only school you can ever attend. Um, so right now in the process, while you still have a year until you start applying, um, keep this perspective in mind because it will help you um, later on in the process. All right, I want to kind of turn to some different admissions myths. These are based on things that I hear, questions that I receive from counselors and students and parents throughout the process. And so I tried to pick a couple of fun ones that I thought um, would give you all some perspective uh, and allow you to hear kind of how an admissions officer might answer questions related to these topics about what you're involved in outside the classroom, inside the classroom, your chances of being admitted, and then preferences that different schools have. So um, the myths I'm going to put up, um, they are myths, I promise. Uh, we're going to get there. Um, but one by one, starting with outside the classroom, your leadership, extracurriculars, and honors should include a nonprofit you founded as well as mention of your Nobel Prize. That is a myth. Um, at least at Yale, we are looking for students who have different interests, um, whether they be leadership, whether they be family responsibilities or hobbies. Several students from my territories last year talked about their bird watching hobby on their extracurricular list. It's fantastic if you are on a sports team or a leader of a team or president of National Honor Society, that's great. And obviously something you should include on your extracurricular list. But not all students to every school has to have those positions listed on their extracurricular list. Schools are trying to get an idea of what you are interested in, how you have spent your time in high school, so that they can get an idea of how you might spend time on their campus, what you might contribute, and what resources you might take advantage of. Um, so uh, even at Yale, we are not expecting that all students have founded a nonprofit that is not as uh, common as you might believe. So whatever it is that you do and are passionate about, follow those passions and tell us what it is that you do. Um, we can't always, but sometimes we can read through students who join several different clubs and organizations there, maybe junior year, so that they can be part of several different clubs that they can list on their college application. We want students to enjoy their time in high school. I know there's a lot of pressure about how students spend their time and what they're involved in and what they're doing to help their chances of getting into college. Um, but I also want to encourage you to be authentic in your interests and to make sure you're doing what you like. Inside the classroom, you must take the most challenging courses, even if you don't do well and you do not enjoy them. This is going to be a myth uh, because colleges want to see that you are, again, following your interests. Yes, that you're challenging yourself. So if your school has many different APs, hopefully you are jumping into um, one or two or several of those classes um, to challenge yourself if that's something that's right for you. It's not going to be right for all students. And we also want you to do well. Uh, so if you are up until 4 a.m. trying to figure out AP calculus, then maybe you um, don't need to be in AP calculus. Make sure you are... Um, following what is best for you. Um, and that is going to help you succeed in the long term in terms of enjoying what you're learning and actually learning rather than uh, struggling. Talking about your chances of admission, um, we get the question, do schools have um, quotas in terms of schools that they're admitting and uh, the region that they're admitting from? I will tell you, we do not. I am not given a certain number of uh, kind of stars that I can put on applications from Horace Greeley. I am not given a number of students from Westchester County or from Northern California that we're allowed to admit. We are admitting the most competitive students who we think have a good fit for Yale. Um, we are not going to um, necessarily always admit students from a high school. There might be a year where we admit five from a high school and the next year admit zero. It totally depends on the pool as well as institutional priorities. And that kind of leads me into um, preferences. There might be rumors, for example, that certain schools are not interested in admitting students from a certain high school that colleges have a bad relationship with a certain high school, 
Um, hopefully, as you've been able to see from me and Rebecca interacting on here tonight, that we have a positive relationship, as I am sure your counselors do with every single admissions officer that they work with at every single institution that students are applying to. Um, we are not looking for one type of student or from students from one type of school. Uh, we are encouraging applicants from a bunch of different backgrounds and high school experiences to apply. Um, schools might be looking for students who are interested in certain things like STEM or the arts or students who are interested in um, engaging with the liberal arts like we are at Yale. Um, so that might be the type of student, but there isn't a magical key that we as admissions officers are looking for in an application that's going to let us know that that student is a fit and should be admitted. So these, hopefully, as I've clarified, are all myths, um, not um, facts or anything close to the truth. I hope kind of you understand a little bit more about the flexibility in the process um, and the need to juniors uh, follow your interests both inside and outside of the classroom. I hope this has been uh, somewhat insightful for all of you um, and would love to uh, just thank your counselors and Ms. Mullen for putting this together and for inviting me on here tonight and all of you uh, for tuning in, students and parents on the call. Um, I know it's a busy time, especially in the fall. Um, and in your junior year. And so I just want to wish you all the best uh, during your process, and especially right now as you're getting started and encourage you also to take deep breaths. You have time uh, and you also have a very capable uh, counseling office that you're working with through this process. And so I know that you all are in very good hands. Um, but now turning it over to, to questions from all of you and I'll go ahead and end my um, screen. Thank you, Chandler. That was super insightful. Um, and I know it was enormously helpful uh, to our families. Um, so to our audience, please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, they are not public. So only um, Ms. Lewis, um, Assistant Director Holden, and I can see them. Um, so um, so feel free to ask away. Um, so here's a question, and I think this is for um, uh, Chandler, how does legacy bear weight in the admissions process? Sure. Um, legacy, um, at least at Yale, because that is what I can speak uh, on behalf of, um, is part of the admissions process. It's something that we do take into consideration um, looking at a student's legacy status. But something that I want to also touch on is um, context. The one piece of context that I talked about tonight is the context of Horace Greeley in your high school. Um, that is the piece of context that we are looking at in the process via the school profile. But we're also looking at a student's context by looking at their background, meaning their family background, their experiences, perhaps they've lived somewhere else in the country or world, there are many different pieces of a student's story that they include on their application, whether that be their identity, whether that be their academic interests, that are all going to be a part of that student's story, um, at least at Yale. And uh, many, uh, many of our peer institutions practice what's known as holistic admissions. So we are not ever just looking at a GPA or just looking at test scores. We're kind of looking at the whole picture and trying to understand who you are as a student. So we have another question in the chat. Um, should a student get a letter of recommendation from a subject that is similar to their intended major at the college level? That's a great question. Um, if a student is interested in, for example, uh, becoming pre-med and want to study biology, then it may be wise to have a teacher who can speak to that student's scientific abilities. Um, it's important to remember, however, that students should request letters from teachers who know them well. So if a student is applying early to a school, which would be right around now when they've been in the classroom during their senior year for two months, 
it's probably not best to ask a senior year teacher if it's your first time having them and they've only gotten to know you for eight weeks. So you want to make sure you are choosing a teacher who uh, knows you well and who can speak to your abilities, um, I'd say, at least for Yale, uh, in whatever subject. But it is recommended, I'd say, um, to think about what you're interested in, where your strengths are, and have a teacher who can speak to those strengths. So there's a question for Greeley. Um, can we receive the current copy of the school profile? You absolutely can. It's actually posted on our counseling website. And if you haven't been there, it's, it's an enormously helpful resource. Um, there's lots of information about SCORE and how to use it. Um, our school profiles there, our curriculums is there. Um, and how you get there is you go to the main Greeley website, go to departments and counseling, and everything you need um, will be posted there. Um, okay, we have another question here. Um, Chandler, do you compare Greeley students against each other, or is the application looked at individually? Are kids applying for different majors put in different piles? Sure. Um, so students applying for different majors are not in different piles. At least at Yale, students are applying to be an undergraduate at Yale. Um, so we are kind of evaluating them in that sense. Uh, we are not reading by school. Um, sometimes it's easier to kind of go down the list in what we call our queue of applicants and to read all the Horace Greeley students at once. But uh, that's not um, best practice or how the process is run. We are not just picking one or two Greeley students that we want to bring to committee or admit. Um, if five students apply early from Greeley and they all have very convincing and competitive applications, there's a great chance we'd admit them all. Um, just as if five apply uh, and only one really seems to stand out or is competitive, then we would admit and respond to that one. So we're not comparing students from the same high school to each other. While they do have the same high school context, they don't have, for example, the same life experiences and family context as each other. Unless they're twins, of course, which we see sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, we have another question in the chat about demonstrated interest. Um, so as far as um, visiting the college's campus, um, perhaps an interview in advance of applying to the school, can you speak a little bit to uh, the best way for a student to show their demonstrated interest how valuable is it? And does Yale, for example, or do many other colleges use demonstrated interest in the application process? Sure. So my answer about demonstrated interest is that it depends. Um, some schools track demonstrated interest. They want to know how interested in the school you are so that they can figure out how likely it is for you to um, accept an offer of admission. Some pieces of demonstrated interest might include visiting the campus, so going on a tour, tuning into online webinars, signing up for an email list, emailing admissions officers. Um, those are different ways that students might express interest in a school, and those are documented kind of behind the scenes in different admissions offices. We do not track demonstrated interest at Yale, uh, so there's no extra credit for coming to campus for a campus visit. Our philosophy is out of equity, um, we know that not all students from across the world who are applying to Yale can come to Yale to visit. So we don't track demonstrated interest. Emailing me, for example, as your admissions officer is not going to help you. Happy to answer questions, but there's no need um, to reach out to reach out. Um, so just be aware of what schools are um, tracking demonstrated interest because it can make a difference in the admissions process if they are looking at this information and you've never, in, they have zero logged interactions um, with you and then you go and apply, um, they might wonder, well, I wonder why they ap applied here if it seems they haven't shown any interest before. So I love this question because we get asked this a lot. And I think um, the eight counselors, we are um, pretty consistent in our answer. Um, but so here it is. Coming from Greeley, are you at a disadvantage if you don't send test scores to a school that is test optional? Um. So as a result of the pandemic, many schools have gone test optional. Some remain test optional. Others have implemented four-year policies um, or have gone back to permanent policies of requiring testing. Yale is currently test optional for this cycle, although we're evaluating 
our policy and we'll announce a new policy in the winter. So keep an eye on our website. I actually have no indication as to which way it's going. Um, but I would not say that it depends on the school that you go to. I think it probably depends on the type of student you are and on your strengths. Will your test score, whatever it is, add to your application and to your file? When schools are test optional, um, read the advice on their website, but they really should be test optional, uh, which means that it's an option for you to submit or not submit based on your decision. Um, we at Yale are not telling students whether they should or should not. We have some means on our website that students can use to kind of judge uh, their decision, but uh, it does not matter in my perspective what school you go to. It's, it's what's right for you as an individual. That's and hopefully that's on the same page as you. That's exactly what we say. So I really appreciate that. We are very much on the same page. Great. Um, so here's a, um, here's a, uh, interesting question. Um, you mentioned that applications are read in a committee. Does every application go to a committee? How does that work? Sure. Um, so committee-based decision-making, uh, at least for us, uh, is where the admissions officer who reads a file um, then has another admissions officer read a file and then decides which students after at least two admissions officers have read a file uh, which students are most competitive and who should be presented to the admissions committee. In other words, who should the admissions committee hear about and vote on? Um, we estimated, and it's in one of our podcast episodes about committee, if we talked about every applicant for five minutes in committee, it would take about a year in business days to uh, do. And so we do not uh, bring every student to the committee table. There are students who apply who, as the area officer and a second outside reader will decide, is not going to be the best fit. Uh, and so we're not going to bring them to the committee table. The students who come to committee are those who uh, we see as having a chance of being admitted. And the admissions committee hears a summary of that student's application based on what the area admissions officer has written. And uh, the committee votes on it. In the committee is an admissions officer, the one presenting, so you could think me, another admissions officer, a chair of the committee, who's sometimes the dean of admissions or another senior admissions officer, a faculty member, and a dean of Yale College. We have current faculty members and deans who are on the ground with students in these committees because they give us great insight about the chances of a student doing well at the institution um, and let us know what resources they might tap into. Um, and so we make decisions that way. Students can be admitted, they can be deferred or waitlisted depending on the round, or they um, can be denied. Thank you for that. Um, and I know you spoke a lot about Yale's approach um, to reading applicants, how you yourself read and then bring students to committee. Um, can you also just speak to a little bit more about um, Yale's admissions um, policies? You talked about single choice early action. Can you give our audience a little more information on single choice early action, how that might differ from an early decision, which is binding and then regular decision, please? Yeah, definitely. So um, some schools are early decision other schools are early action. The main difference between those two is its binding status. So if you apply somewhere early decision, so you're applying early, typically right around now in the fall, you are telling that school, if I'm admitted, I will come. It is binding. Um, but early action is not binding. So you can apply early, but you do not have to go even if you get in and you will have all the way until the regular decision deadline, uh, response deadline, to let that school know if you're going to that school. Yale is early action, so it's not binding. But it and other institutions are single choice or restrictive early action, which means that if you want to apply early to Yale, it's the only private institution to which you may apply in an early round. You can apply to public institutions, international institutions, rolling admissions programs, EA2 programs, but you cannot apply, for example, to our peer institutions in their early rounds. Um, so that's an admissions policy that not all schools have, but is important to keep in mind. And again, it's not binding. So students can be admitted to Yale um, and then apply to a bunch of different schools in regular decision. Regular decision is where most of our applicants apply. 
Um, it's kind of the last uh, kind of round, but it's also the main round that students are applying under. And there is generally great freedom in terms of the schools that students can apply to. Um, I don't know about students at Horace Greeley, um, but on average, students may apply to five to 10 to 15 different schools in regular decision. Can you talk a little bit about how admissions has changed since COVID? I know we share with our students that um, the landscape certainly changed when um, test optional came because colleges have now um, a much broader group of students to choose from. Um, anything else you might want to add about that? Well, something that I would say that I think is really good for you all to know as juniors and parents of juniors is that kind of the wave of disruption caused by COVID, um, meaning students taking gap years, students waiting to apply to colleges, is nearing the end. Um, I think last year uh, there was a big increase in applications, at least um, at Yale and at other institutions, because students kind of were waiting to apply to college because of COVID and, and uncertainty around that. But I think by the time you all are applying next year, um, we'll kind of be a little bit back to normal. But that doesn't mean that your lives, whether that be academic or extracurricular opportunities or personal or family health, were not affected by COVID. So um, we will continue to see the effects and read the effects in college essays uh, of COVID. And we encourage students to provide additional information in their application whether that's related to COVID-19 or otherwise, to give us another piece of context to help us understand their story, especially if it's COVID related. Thank you. And um, in addition to um, the parts of the application that you discussed already in this question and answer and during your presentation, what besides teacher letters of recommendation um, are typically uh, submitted from a student to a college? What are you typically reviewing? How much maybe weight is placed on each part of the application? Sure. Um, so most students are going to apply um, through what's called the Common App, the Common Application. Um, some students might also apply through the Coalition Application, which is powered by SCORE. Um, and we also at Yale accept the QuestBridge um, organization, which is for high achieving low income students. Um, so we accept all three applications, but all students are required to submit the same documentation. So at Yale and many other institutions, we require two teacher recommendations. We require that those recommendations be from core subjects. So think about math, English, a foreign language, a science, history. Um, we want to see two letters from one of those, from two of those subjects. Um, we also want to read and love reading in full your counselor letters who give us context as to what you're looking for and looking forward to in college um, and gives us information about the school year and what you've been involved in during your four years. We also are reading your main college essay, what we call your personal statement sometimes, um, the college essay that you might already be thinking about. And then we're also reading at Yale, Yale supplemental questions. So many schools will ask questions that they're interested in. Uh, for example, maybe why did you, why are you interested in this major? Or why are you interested in applying to our school? My best advice for the supplemental questions is to be as specific as possible. If you're applying to um, schools up and down um, the West Coast, do not say, I'm applying to your school because I want to go to school on the West Coast. Uh, pick something specific about that school that really stands out. Um, we're looking at an extracurricular list. You have 10 opportunities, typically, um, 10 different spots to fill in, uh, telling us what you've been involved in for how long, how many hours a week, how many weeks out of the year. Um, and that's a lot of room. You don't need to fill it all up. Again, uh, be genuine. Tell us what you really, what has been a highlight for you in, in terms of how you have spent your time in high school and what you're involved in and what positions you may or may not hold. Um, and then we are also looking at the school profile to try to understand your school. We're looking at your uh, GPA. Um, we are looking at the courses you're taking. I think it's important to remember, um, again, that you don't need to take uh, five APs your junior or senior year. We at Yale are not counting up uh, the numbers of classes you are taking. We are not getting a magnifying glass out. 
uh, looking at um, every course you've taken and, and how you've done. I mean, we need to, we are, we are looking at the full transcript, but we're not spending 10 minutes on it. Um, so it's okay if you are taking three instead of four APs. Um, that's okay. Uh, and then we're also looking at test scores. If you submit them again, Yale's test optional this cycle, we'll have a policy coming out this winter for a longer term kind of policy decision about that. But at Yale, we're holistic. So we're looking at all of these together. We want to see overall strength. So a student who might be really strong academically, but has only maybe joined one club uh, and likes to bake in their free time, probably is not going to be someone that we see really jumping into the community here at Yale. Um, and that's just based on our institutional preferences. Um, but important to think about, too, what you are telling a college and the profile of that college as well. So I have um, one last question, and I think we'll wrap up. Um, so we often get students um, and parents who um, become really fixated on the GPA down to the tenth of a point. Yeah. Um, and we talk about how you know college admissions never comes down to a point. It never comes down to is your GPA a four one or a four zero. Um, but I think maybe to hear it from somebody else might be helpful. Can you talk a little bit about that? Definitely. Um, so when I am looking at applicants and when we are making decisions, we are seeing students who have taken many different courses. And if you're thinking about two different students, one may have taken one more AP than the other, but they both all have A's on their transcript. This student's weighted GPA is going to be a little bit higher than the other ones. Um, but even if one student has maybe one A minus, that GPA is going to differ. That is not going to make or break a decision. We, I uh, am never going to um, have it come down to looking at the GPA if you have identical students and allowing uh, even you know half a point to make a difference um, on a GPA. It's really more about um, holistically the type of student that you have been. So if you've been uh, challenging yourself and doing well generally, but you got a B junior year because you were taking care of your grandmother who just had hip surgery and that one class suffered because of that, that's okay. Uh, we understand that life also happens um, and there is context behind that. That does not mean that you don't know calculus and that you are not going to do well in your AP Calc BC class senior year. Um, and so I think it's important to remember that we are hearing about you as a student outside of your transcript, outside of your GPA, outside of the number of APs you're taking. We're reading two lengthy letters from your teachers telling us about your performance. Um, and a GPA and score in maybe one course doesn't define who you are. That's really great. And what a positive message to um, end on for our students and parents. Um, I can't thank you enough on behalf of um, our counseling department, Chandler. You are an enormous resource to us. We appreciate all the support you've given. Um, and we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to our students and families tonight. Yeah, um, absolutely. And for our students and families watching, there will be a recording of this on the website, probably on Monday. Um, thank you so much for coming and we hope you have a wonderful evening.